Deceptions in Game Journalism, Amstrad Style. Thought I'd do something a little bit different on this Sunday evening when this video is released. I'm going to look at some kind of deceptions in early 90s magazine publishing in the Amstrad sphere. Uh, specifically, mainly here in Amstrad Computer User. Most of the stories about the big deceptions in games journalism in the 80s and 90s are well trodden uh, and explored. For example, everyone knows about the outrun Europa uh, previews and reviews of games that had full colour screenshots and the colour gets taken out of them. The Sinclair user review of Nemesis that, uh, well, turned out to be some mocked up screenshots, didn't it? But here's some lesser known examples via Amstrad Computer User. Amstrad Computer User was initially run by Amstrad itself uh, from the headquarters it was sold off but uh, in late 86, but continued to be run from Amstrad's headquarters until it got moved again and then changed editors, oh, about issue 50, something like that. And then it just went on a kind of, I think it had a kind of several different owners. And a good place to look at is the January 1991 edition Turtles on the cover. And the first worrying thing is a two-page review of the Turtles game without really mentioning anything about the Amstrad version. It mentions the plot, there's no score, and there's nothing about how the Amstrad version fares. Hmm. Anyway, at least we've got Amstrad screenshots, and we turn the page, and it's Flimbo's Quest from System 3. And my goodness, look at these screenshots. Look at them. As we go in, these must be the best Amstrad graphics ever. They're so that they're, they're so good, and it doesn't mention again much about the Amstrad version or anything about the Amstrad version in the in the review. Where it says the graphics, which have been designed with console play in mind, are visually stunning. The backdrops are impressive and varied, and control of Flimbo through the screens is very easy indeed. So you know that does clearly refer to an Amstrad version, but. This clearly isn't an Amstrad version. Chris Knight is the reviewer. He's the editor and Amstrad computer user at this stage. We've also got the phrase, as with many of the offerings from System 3, Flimbo is going to be a guaranteed classic. Its originality, graphics, fairy sound effects, and ease of controllability make it totally addictive. And by utilising more screen space, you get a much larger playing area to boot. Okay. I'm looking at these screenshots of Flimbo's Quest, and yeah, that's clearly an ST on Amiga version, but isn't the main character blue in the game from memory? And it's green in these screenshots? Could these even be pre-release screenshots? Not sure. Not seen the game for quite a while. And uh, uh, the weird scoring system ACU had at this stage, where they didn't actually give a score, they just had these little icon things. Still, 90% for graphics, 86% for Sonics, and 96% for playability. And, uh, well, we better go and have a look at what Amstrad Action said about this. And here we are in AA with uh, a game that looks very, very different and certainly isn't scoring those kinds of um, scores, 73% in total. And no, this is, this is the Amstrad version. And it actually does talk about it being on the CPC in far more detail as well. And yeah, it looks like Amstrad Computer User were reviewing an ST or Amiga version of the game in order to um, get, well, not even exclusive because I can't work out why ACU would, would do this if they just had... It's bizarre because there's no reason why, as we look at this Amstrad action review version, you know, they give it a good review, it gets 73% overall. Um, but Adam Waring in the second opinion says gameplay is extremely limited and uh, the graphics are none too special either. And 
yeah, that's a little bit inconsistent on the graphics. So Rainbow One still has it, but this is close. I mean, cuteness, um, probably that. But yeah, this is the Amstrad version. And whatever Amstrad computer user were reviewing, it certainly wasn't the Amstrad version. But surely they wouldn't pull the same trick in the same issue with the same publisher with the same reviewer. Uh, this is Ninja Remix, Last Ninja 2. And, and that's clearly Commodore 64 graphics. What's more, it's nearly the same screenshot twice. Um, and that's one of the cutscenes, not the gameplay itself. And if you know Last Ninja 2 on the CPC, you will know there is no introduction sequence. Um, there's no real music either. It's literally got a copy of the Spectrum beeper music that just sounds absolutely awful and the entire thing is monochrome it's a really really shoddy lazy and quick spectrum port so whatever chris knight is playing here well it's it's not the cpc version it's the c64 and he's trying to pass this off as the cpc which is absolute and total deception the entire review is a fabrication of a game that probably didn't exist on the CPC at the time it was reviewed and they just thought they could get away with reviewing a C64 version on the promise that the CPC version would have everything that the C64 version does. It's absolute deception. It's total dishonesty. It's disgraceful. It's absolutely disgraceful, especially because with the Flimbo's Quest review, clearly not the CPC in the screenshots, but with the C64 version here, actually squint and that's conceivably the colors are slightly out but it's a could well be a cpc version dreadful total deception you have to wonder what motivated acu to do this um to do two reviews in the same issue from the same publisher and basically not review cpc versions i cannot think what that motivation could be um, no idea at all. Why would you do this? Why would you do it? Hmm? Still, at least Amstrad Computer User reviewed the actual Amstrad version of Rainbow Islands. Again, what's the thumbs up rating? But we got 45% for graphics, 55% for sound, 52% for playability. 52% for playability on Rainbow Islands. If you're not familiar with the well, Rainbow Islands on the CPC, it's it's a wonderful conversion. It's not as good as the Spectrum version, but it, it, it looks nice, it sounds nice, and it is Rainbow Islands. And unless you've got an Amiga or a main copy or something like that, it, it, you know, you'll play it and you'll enjoy it, and it's kind of 90% or thereabouts territory. For it, well, everything apart from the sound, probably the sound's not quite as good, but the graphics are really nice, a little bit flickery. Overall verdict would be in the high 80s. Basil Bread here does not like Rainbow Islands, and I can't be sure that he's played it. It's, I mean, perhaps he has played it, but he does the kind of, um, well, I mean, th there's some kind of guff going on for the first three paragraphs about his grandfather before we actually get on to Rainbow Islands, and then we talk about the plot, and then finally get around to the important fact it's a follow-up to Bubble Bobble. The kind of feedback about the game is the graphics are better than the original game. The screen is fun to look at with cuddly monsters and cutie pie zombies. It's a likeable game which will grow on the more patient player. And, and that's really all you're getting in terms of a review, which is, I mean, what kind of reviewing is this? But I may have got it wrong. The Amstrad version could be absolute rubbish. Let's check out Amstrad Action. Amstrad Action give it a double paid spread as the game deserves. 90% for graphics. It's also cute. Glorious Technicolor. Eat your heart out. Sound 65%. Okay, the tune can get on your nerves. Ground Factor 94%. Stain Power 92%. AA rating 88%. AA rave. Uh, Trenton Webb really likes it adam wearing um doing the second opinion really likes it they give it a very good review as every other magazine did
did. And you just have to wonder what ACU were on. Um, you can have disagreements about games, but surely not that much. Still, I'm hoping Amstrad Computer user are at least consistent when they come to the re-release. And here we are, May 1992, with suddenly the graphics are worth 88%, sound 84%, playability 89%, and it gets a jackpot rating there. And there's suddenly, well, it's a review from Jim Johnson here. actually talks about the game and isn't a lot of nonsense. So, yeah, um, they can't... <sighs> Goodness knows what was going on with that original review. That just... Um, I have no idea how you can get Rainbow Islands so very, very wrong. But at least they got the re-release right. But hey, Amazon Action never did anything dodgy, right? Well, as long as you don't count reviewing your own games. Yes, this is a review of Quattro Combat in Amstrad Action. And the reviewer is Adam Waring, Amstrad Action's technical editor. He gives the compilation uh, 83%, which is a fair score. Uh, Deathstalker 81%, Arcade Flight Simulator 78%, SAS Combat Simulator 68%, and Ninja Massacre 81%. So that's 81% for Ninja Massacre and 81% for Deathstalker. Adam Waring coded Ninja Massacre. So without declaring anywhere in the review that it hit one of his games, um, he's re literally reviewed his own code. So uh, let's see how fair he is, because I, I know these games inside out. Um, Ninja Massacre is basically a gauntlet rip-off. Originally sold for $1.99, now on this $2.99 for four games compilation. So you're not really going to complain. And as he points out, with single player, it's quite a challenge, but the fun starts with two players. You can work as a team as we against each other. That's, that's fine. Um, I don't think there's anything contentious here as part of this compilation. He's being very fair. It would be nice... Well, I mean, again, I just, um, I don't know how you can review your own games, really. It's, um, yeah, it, it's quite interesting. I mean, Quattro Combat is a brilliant compilation, and he's called each one of these games exactly right, I think. Uh, perhaps a little bit, I don't know, a little bit generous on Deathstalker. I think Ninja Mask is a bit better than Deathstalker, but... 83% for four games for 2 99 Well, I'd probably overall give it more because it's four solid games for your money, basically. Um, SS Combat Simulator being the weakest. But, um, yeah, it is a deception because you probably should declare when you're reviewing your own computer games. But he's not saying anything out of the ordinary or dishonest here. So I hope that's a little bit of an interesting look at just kind of looking minor, well, some of the major actually deceptions in the world of Amstrad computer magazines in the early 90s. Um, I always trust AA. AA uh, Amstrad Action are always generally right on their reviews and yeah, past, past issue 50 or so of Amstrad Computer User you simply can't trust them on games. You can trust them on their technical stuff. Their technical stuff is generally better than Amstrad Action but yeah, it's a uh, a little bit of a minefield, but hopefully that's an interesting look at something that's generally not been covered uh, when people talk about this kind of thing. And uh, yes, Chinivision will be back on Thursday night with a more regular review. Thanks for watching.